This video will deal with parties that were started on the questions of slavery and union of the United States before the Civil War. The Liberty Party, the Free Soil Party, and the Constitutional Union Party all started before the onset of the Civil War. They were created to deal with the issue of slavery and the sectionalism of the Union in order to solve the issue of slavery and keep the Union together. The first party I will talk about is the Liberty Party. The Liberty Party was created in 1840 in order to provide a political force against the institution of slavery. It started in Warsaw, New York, when the delegates who opposed William Lloyd Garrison's idea that opposing slavery politically was sinful and futile would put together the party on the basis to dramatize the anti-slavery issue, pressure legislatures into taking firmer anti-slavery positions, prevent slavery from extending beyond the states where it already existed into federal territories, and eradicate both the interstate slave trade and the institution itself within the boundaries of the nation's capital. James Burney would lead the party in 1840 and 1844, garnering 7,000 and 62,000 votes respectfully, even helping to deny the state of New York to Henry Clay in the latter election. The candidate in 1848 would be John Hale, but he would drop out and help form the next party, and the Liberty Party would die out as a result. The next party I will talk about is the Free Soil Party. The Free Soil Party was started in 1846 under the beliefs of Representative David Wilmot in the Wilmot Provisio. The main goal of the party and the amendment to the bill that would negotiate peace with Mexico that was sent to Congress was to stop the expansion of slavery in the western territories of the United States and bar them from ever allowing slavery there. The party would be started in 1848 with a coalition of conscious Whigs, the Liberty Party, and Barnburner Democrats, which is the anti-slavery fraction of New York Democrats. They mainly attracted small farmers who didn't like the prospect of competing with slave labor as well as abolitionists. Martin Van Buren would run as the candidate for the Free Soil Party in 1848 and weaken the Democrats' power in New York, allowing Zachary Taylor to capture the state. The Free Soil Party would be reduced in 1852 but would capture some seats of Congress and hold some influence as they kept the balance of power between the Democrats and Whigs. They would become more disorganized in 1854 and be absorbed by the anti-slavery Republican Party after this. And the final party I will talk about is the Constitutional Union Party because there wasn't enough on this party to put it in a separate video. The Constitutional Union Party was created in 1859 in order to support the preservation of the Union and was in support of the Constitution despite sectional differences that plagued the nation. John Bell and Edward Everett would run for the party and would primarily appeal to the border states in the 1860 election. They would capture these states and would succeed at further diluting the vote allowing Lincoln to win the 1860 election. The party would disappear after the Civil War. They believed in the supremacy of the Constitution and that the nation would be fine if we just stuck to the Constitution. While these parties weren't successful, they would help form the basis of the Republican Party and help to ensure Republican victory in the 1860 election in the case of the Constitutional Union Party. They were the start of the anti-slavery party movements and the start of the Civil War. They are interesting parties in their own right despite having no permanent staying power. All three of these parties were one-issue parties and were only meant to exist in the time that they existed, unlike the Republicans who would stay up all the way to the present day. Thanks for watching this party video. The next party video will be the American Party, and I think that is the last party video until the Republican Party. See you then.